I'm Warren, a minister here at Greenford Baptist Church and welcome to yet another short talk under the banner of Sword Stance. Again, using uh, the Word of God, the Sword of God, the Word of God to, to penetrate into uh, um, division between flesh and spirit, to, to get to some of the key points in our life and, and, and not always to have a good old jab and really make us feel awful but actually to inspire us uh, to move us on to continue in our walk uh, in our battle um, in in being a good follower of Jesus Christ it's in that that today's passage is is quite key or at least the bible verse to which I really want to uh, sort of focus on and it actually makes me laugh in a minute because uh, as we go to look on this, um, uh, why does it make me laugh is because actually inside right now I'm feeling really, really tired and I have no idea why, but I am. So it makes me laugh that I'm actually today, uh, I made the decision yesterday, I believe that this is what the Lord wants me to talk on. And uh, it makes me laugh that I have woken up this morning not exactly feeling uh, full of the joys of uh, uh, full energy and awakeness at the moment. That will clear after a few coffees. Don't worry about that. Anyway, um... This is, I want to look at Romans uh, chapter 12 in a moment. And I'm re- we're going to read really from uh, verses 9 um, to, uh, yeah, i probably just go on for a bit to maybe verse 18. Um, but I'm going to read the whole passage, but actually just one verse I really want us to, to focus on uh, for this week. But let me just read the whole passage to you. So, don't. Just pretend to love others, says Paul. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honouring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. I know, one of probably the most difficult verses, but actually really does work. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honourable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. That whole passage... Oh, you could unpack tons from all of that. There can be a sense of false guilt being thrown in the process in there. There'll be a sense of, oh, my life, I must strive for these things. And yes, we are we are called to strive for them. We are called to try and achieve these in a way, but not to force the situation. I think that's really important. I suppose right out of the beginning, don't pretend to love others, um, but really love them. And I suppose... If you want to pretend to love others, that means you're forcing the issue from within your own strength. Um, and actually, we should be sort of saying, Lord, help me love this person. Um, doesn't mean we have to go out of our way all the time, neither. It, it's, it's very nuanced, and we're not going to unpack that verse. I want to jump to the verse that really struck out for me originally, and, and I think the Lord wants to talk about right now. And that's verse 11. And in the New Living Translation, it says, Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Never be lazy, but serve the Lord. Work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Now, in the NLT, if you have a New Living Translation version, you'll notice there's a little star at the end. And at that star, there's some footnotes at the bottom. And as usual, it's with all biblical uh, uh, translations and especially translations in our Bible. um, We recognise that maybe that due to translation 
uh, differences, as in not English to English, I'm talking from the original Greek into English, that there might well be some um, slight nuanced, not quite sure, this might read better like this, because obviously there can never be a direct translation that makes sense uh, from the Greek to the English. You do need to look at all the, the grammatical and the, the nuance and maybe the tone and wondering actually what they're really trying to get at here. If it wasn't for the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, our, our biblical understanding, our translational understanding would not be as good as it is now. So this little star of the thing really is helpful. And actually it's the translation at the end, but it says, but let the Lord's spirit excite, sorry, but let the spirit excite you as you serve the Lord. And that's really for me, uh, as I read this passage, I thought, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. And I was sitting there thinking, the problem is we read the work hard as in keep doing more. You must be busy. You know, it's um, what's that old phrase, isn't it? Um, quick, look busy. Jesus is coming back. Um, it's that sort of uh, uh, sense for me as I read that is work hard. I look busy. Uh, we tend to translate that in be busy, constantly filling up your entire day with making sure that you are busy and th to me that's not what God is up yes God likes us to work hard for him but doing the things that he wants us to do not what we think he wants us to do there, there's a distinct difference um, and so therefore then uh, we can make our lives look busy I, I'm sure plenty of people let's be honest if the boss is not around you sort of oh, I'm breathing on. we'll just take a few moments break and then all of a sudden you hear oh the boss is coming quick quick look busy and, and suddenly look fervent and whereas we do know it does say elsewhere in the bible that that we must work in, we must keep going for the lord we must work for our masters as if we're working for the lord and why are we working for the lord well because i suppose we recognize the grace that is poured on us we recognize and give thanks for the fact that we are forgiven so it's in that, as we recognise that, that we want to go, yeah, actually, I want to do the best for my father in heaven because of what he's done for me. He's given his best to us. So therefore, then I want to try and give my best to him. But as we know from the story of Mary and Martha, for the Lord, sometimes our best is just sitting with him, not frantically doing uh, a load of stuff but actually sitting with him and so I suppose for us partly here is not being lazy is actually don't be lazy in your relationship with God actually sit with him be with him invest in the relationship enthusiastically you know if you've suddenly found a new uh, girlfriend or boyfriend or um, or a new friendship, um, we can very much, right at the beginning, be really enthusiastic in, in spending time with that person for obvious reasons. We want to get to know them. We want to really just be with them. And so we invest the time in being with them. And there's an enthusiasm behind them. And um, sometimes it can be actually, uh, initially, quite hard work because you're really trying to discover to get to know them because you want to know them. And so you really put the time in, and that's what can feel like hard work. And I don't like this NLT translation of work hard, because, so, so sorry, let's go back. So let's spend time with God enthusiastically, and that way is not a way, you're not actually lazy in sitting with God, bizarrely enough. You're not being lazy. Um, you're doing what God wants you to do. And it's in that communication with God that you then, recognize and he sort of tells you well what he would like you to do and it's actually as you then and he also then empowers and gives you in doing it so working hard it doesn't quite do it because that turns into then a works based faith in my head it's like well I need to do enough or else the Lord won't forgive me or I need to do enough today have I done enough and then it can turn after a while genuine into a real I've not done enough and then we forget that we're meant to be having a Sabbath day each week 
That's a command from the Lord. Have a Sabbath rest day. We forget to do that because we think, oh, no, every day I must work hard for the Lord. And so it's very difficult. What I like is this little footnote version of the possible translation. But let the spirit excite you as you serve the Lord. So you want to never be lazy. So you recognize the grace upon you. You recognize, therefore, then that you want to, because of that forgiveness that you've been given, you want to show other people that forgiveness and let them experience it. So therefore, you're willing to do what the Lord wants you to do. But the first thing you do is you're not lazy. You spend time with God. And then what you then do is you then in out of that, you go and serve the Lord as he's asked you to do. But as you're serving the Lord, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to excite you in that moment. So that's where the enthusiastic bit comes along. So actually, it doesn't feel like hard work per se. It actually feels like I'm excited here as I'm serving the Lord. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to energize you, to, to, to keep your, your excitement going. Now, the word zeal is, is a big word within the Bible. Keep your zeal for the Lord. And that is enthusiasm, your love for the Lord. It's, it's that word of keep it going. I got to say, every time I look at the word zeal, there's a sense of, well, that's old fashioned. I don't, don't shout at me. Some of you might love the word. But for me, I just see it as a word of zeal. I suppose we don't use it really as a, 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 a in normal um, outside uh, uh, society. It's a, it's a word you rarely hear. But, you know, there's this keep your further, keep going for the Lord. And and I suppose it's keep your and the Oxford Dictionary version is having great energy, enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. Well, we should be zealous, have our zeal for the Lord. And we only have that by spending time with him. And then it's through his Holy Spirit that we become excited to serve him. So another version of that tra the literal translation at verse 11 is be on the boil in spirit. Constantly being in the spirit, constantly bubbling over, constantly willing to serve the Lord, constantly wanting to serve the Lord, constantly being inspired by the Lord to serve him in his purposes on this earth. So for some of us at the moment, I know there is a sense of weariness in everything that's going on in the world. And then there can become a sense of weariness in keeping our relationship with the Lord going and serving him at a drop of a hat, I suppose. And I suppose this talk is to say, look, the Lord is saying, keep excited in the spirit in serving in me. Keep enthusiastically serving me, not by making yourself busy. By, by first being with me and helping me to show you each day what maybe I'd like you to do today. It's to keep that enthusiasm going for God. To keep recognising the grace that's been poured out upon you. To recognise that his blessing and his love is an everyday event. And you're to keep that spiritual fervour, as they say, that spiritual zeal but we don't self-generate it. That's when we get burnt out. What we do is, by spending time with God, it's his spirit that excites us. And we keep going. We do more than keep going. We actually excel and surprise and wow, keep going. So I want to encourage you. Don't be lazy in your relationship with God. Hear from him. Enthusiastically serve him. But serve him enthusiastically because it's been generated by your relationship with God. Have a great time with the Lord right now. God bless to you.